Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. So we got our fruit press. Let's see how many ways I can mess this up. Let's see. Uh, well, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and mess up our front door by making making the wrong wood for it. Second of all, we're going to go ahead and fill the fruit press up with berries completely and then compress the berries into juice, which is what the fruit press does, by the way, with nothing underneath it because I am a, a total idiot. But uh, then we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a, a barrel, right? Because that makes sense. Uh, and then I realized that the barrel doesn't go underneath and we actually need to make a bucket in full caps. So we're gonna make a bucket, uh, not a bucket, a bucket, because that's, how you speak in caps so we make ourselves a bucket and we're gonna go and we're gonna place it underneath the fruit press let's see how that works out so we put our put our <laughs> bucket underneath and I naively think oh well it's not too late right we can save some of the juice no you can't it's gone sorry sorry fr fr juice gone fruit gone um, so I, I have to take out the uh, mash and then put in some more berries. But first we're gonna do a little bit of time-lapse farming and uh, maintain maintain our farm like a good, good farmer lad and uh, get ourselves some wheat, which is going to be very important. Um, not, in this uh, not in this episode, but in the next episode um, should come in handy. But there's a lot of wheat and we have to do a lot of kerning. I don't know, you know I know it's grinding, but I, I, I like the word kern. You know, the word kern, it's a good word. And I like I like using it as a verb. T to kern is is a, a good time. There goes our torch again. Uh, how many is that leak like uh, once per episode where I put my torch out and uh, talk about how much I would like to have a lantern? Is that does that happen about once per episode? Do you think? We'll see. But hey, here's our hole with coal. Um, I don't think I kept the. The marker here because I'm sure you're getting tired of watching me put in markers but I did call that <laughs> hole with coal which I thought was funny I don't know why so you can see yeah some of the some of the leaves are starting to turn a little bit orange and that uh, that's making me a little bit nervous hence why I'm spending a lot more time gathering berries and I'm gonna keep some of that process in but you know mostly I just keep in a, a very small amount once you've seen me uh, gather one berry. You've seen me gather all of the berries, so you can be rest assured that I have, I have gone and collected tons of berries. But uh, I, I, you know, you won't see a lot of that because I'm sure that's not very fun or interesting. We have to collect. Still, we're still collecting more uh, claystone for the purposes of building up the cottage, which you know is going well. Um, but I have harvested quite a lot of the local boulders. Um, and so at a certain point, I am just going to have to get my hands dirty and start digging in the, in, the, in the ground for the rest of our resources. I am getting pretty close to completing, I would say, the first part of the cottage, which is like, you know, there's four walls and a floor and also kind of an underground, um, which is going to become the cellar. But, uh, you know, there's still lots more to do. I do want to make it pretty nice. I don't want... Like, if you're going to spend a lot of time making a huge cottage, uh, there should be, you know, both form and function there. And I do want to give it a windmill, which should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to make heavy use of the chisel in order to give our uh, cottage some really nice trim once, you know, once it's ready for that. But it's all a process. And I have to consider function first before I consider uh, how I, I pretty it up. But that'll be something we do. So here you can see I'm you know, pri prioritizing one berry for another. I found a really huge batch of blueberry bushes, so I decided to uh, eat the small stack I had in favor of the large stack of blueberries. But you can see there, I was very, very sharp-eyed and noticed that there was danger afoot, and there was a wolf hanging out in the bushes, so I decided to opt out a little bit and go and check out some other locations for more food but I am going to try and collect as many berries as I can because I want to make use of the fruit press the fruit press is going to be useful for the sake of preservation and for the sake of making some 
interesting uh, luxury goods like wine and uh, other fun stuff like that, but uh, not for a while. Uh, I do accidentally make some wine probably in the next episode, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that at the appropriate time. So how many times do you think I uh, throw away my fire starter for the sake of inventory management? Inventory management has slowly become a huge problem for me because I often just have a totally overloaded inventory full of stuff. And it's probably annoying for a lot of people because like I did straight up just make a bunch of crates um, like two or three episodes ago now and I have not used them at all. And I just instead opt for having a pile of stuff in my inventory taking up space. And it means I can't carry a lot of stuff. And when I go like, you know, foraging, I can't, I have to prioritize and throw some things away. It's annoying for me and probably for you, but it's something I hope to remedy in this episode and also the next. So you can see we have a, uh, you know, temporal storm first time in a while. I've become very blase about the temporal storms. I just kind of treat them as a, uh, a way of getting some medial chores done, um, get some cooking done, get some a few things. If I had a water source in my shack, then I could get some panning done, which would be pretty good. But I'm not that organized yet. Maybe when I um, officially move into the cottage, then I will be able to get some of that stuff done. I know that uh, some people like to work through the night, even if like you know their work their um, playing single player and, and you know once you have four walls and you know for sure that nothing will spawn in your house then uh, you can get quite a lot done but I, I don't know I like to just treat the game as if I was actually surviving the situation and I, I feel like sleep is necessary so hence why I sleep and I don't really want to have to listen to groaning and griping outside my walls uh, all the time so uh, got quite a bit of grinding done, uh, and you know while we're while we're uh, waiting out the storm, that was pretty good. And you know my my uh, process now for the post temporal storm is to flee my household um, to see what has spawned and see what I have to deal with and uh, see what I have to kill. And of course, you know things are spawning in our cottage, so I have to deal with that. But fortunately, in this situation, all of the things kind of spawned uh, under. Are under our floor um, and so the way you deal with that is you just run away like just go a few um, chunks away and get some like resource gathering done and then they'll despawn which is kind of a nice little unexpected feature um, you know t technically and arguably exploitative but I don't care uh, so I found a nice little boon of rabbits kind of hanging out in one of my fire pits. Uh, I felt a little bit bad of taking advantage of that, but you know, fair's fair. There's no snares in the game, so uh, I guess it makes sense to make your own traps in a way, uh, like in in game kind of mechanical traps. Decide to um, basically <laughs> close up the floorboards and keep our mon keep a monster den under our household for a little while. Uh, Fruit mash is going to be an important thing that we take advantage of later, but for now I'm still messing up the fruit press and not really fully understanding how it works. Um, and it's not entirely my, my fault. It's a little bit weird how it works because, you know, you would think in real life you could, you know, you could obviously do some things um, that you can't really in the game. For instance, mixing fruit juice. And you can see here I'm compressing some fruit and I'm like yay I'm getting more fruit juice no I'm not that fruit juice is also going totally to waste because I already had fruit juice in there and so therefore you know and they don't mix and vintage story is pretty finicky when it comes to fruit and fruit press and fruit juice um, it, it needs to have an exact amount of you know one kind of fruit juice in one type of barrel and another and another and you know blah 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 and it's um a little bit frustrating when you're trying to figure the, the mechanic out and you're realizing that you're um, basically wasting a lot of berries that you spent a lot of time gathering but you know once you figure it out and then you can kind of work around it and we'll get into that probably in the next episode but you know for now uh, you can see I've started to actually put my raw in a barrel that's going to be really important because you need to basically fill up an entire barrel of rot 
and um, then you can you need to seal it for 20 days so it becomes compost and that'll be important for when we want to make high fertility dirt but for now uh, it's going to be an ongoing process and the the what I've resorted to doing and I think the fruit press is very useful for this is to basically turn all of my berries into fruit juice and then use the mash and basically keep the mash in my inventory. It's unfortunate that I have to kind of keep it in my inventory. I could put it in a jar, but then this process would take far, far longer because the jar, any like putting any food in any container basically helps to preserve it. And what I actually want is the fruit mash to spoil. The fruit mash isn't particularly useful for anything. You can eat it, but it's not great sustenance. And you can also use it for animal husbandry, but that's not something I really want to do yet. So for now, it's actually way more useful to um, use for, for generating rot. Um, once we generate enough rot, we can store it all in a barrel and then create some uh, compost. Compost is gonna be super important. So we're, you know, I'm slowly getting into this process of like when I make food, I eat a little bit of it and then I store the rest or preserve the rest in our makeshift cellar. Uh, the makeshift cellar is not long for this world, but I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to interrupt this for a second because we're going to talk about what I do here. So I'm making linen and I'm making a bag. The bag is very good. It's an extra couple of inventory slots, but I want to talk about this. What happens here is I replace one of my baskets with the bag and I can't put the basket back in my inventory. And why is that? Because the basket itself ha is an inventory. And I didn't realize this, but it's the Vintage Story is not clever about how it manages different inventory systems. Um, you would think that if there's enough inventory space and you take a basket out, it would just kind of shift all of the extra goods into your inventory because there's not really any point or reason to keep goods in the basket that you are now throwing away. I didn't realize this and I just kind of threw the basket away and the basket unfortunately had an entire stack of medium fertility soil which I had gathered for the sake of uh, turning into high fertility soil and I don't even realize that this is happening uh, much like all of the mistakes I kind of make in this game is it's happened and I don't realize it until I check the video logs and I'm like oh there goes a stack of medium fertility soil and I actually I didn't even notice until just now this wolf I actually did see it for a moment before I started getting savaged by it um, but yeah that's our first death in a long time uh, wolves wolves are definitely the most dangerous thing in this game so far anyway I know there are other dangerous things but we'll get to that those later so you can see all of the drifters and creatures and cr creepy crawlies have despawned and I have an opportunity to start working under uh, our cottage now the the process here is going to be very strange for some people um, I'm going to talk a bit about what I want to do here but I guess what I want to um, sort of let you know right away is two things one I want to maintain a little bit of the architecture of the amph amphitheater and I know someone mentioned that this is kind of an amphitheater ruin and I like the look of it and I wanted to kind of maintain that and keep it um, looking like the amphitheater a little bit but also I wanted to kind of restore it to what you would think that it would look like um, and then turn it at least the base into uh, my storage for the purposes of preserving food so you're going to see that, but the, the big question mark that I'm probably going to hear from people is that I preserve, like, restore the amphitheater uh, and then cover it up in a little, in a way. Um, you're going to see me basically place down a lot of granite cobblestone and then place uh, half, half wooden blocks or half birch wooden blocks over the floor. Um, and for a lot of people, that's going to seem very strange, like completely renders the, having those cobblestones meaningless. I could have just kept it as dirt or claystone or whatever default uh, was underneath there. But um, I'm trying to play this game in a bit more of a realistic fashion and, and try and uh, play it as if I was actually trying to build this cottage. So it makes sense to me to replace the underneath with uh, granite cobblestones because that's what I would do 
and also like when I you know maintain like replace the back wall before putting more stairs to restore the amphitheater I would you know put some more granite cobblestones and and keep, basically keep everything um, structurally uh, kind of integral like you know it makes sense to me that I would want it to be a, have a strong foundation so I know that's going to be very strange for some people but that's kind of how I wanted to do it and I guess for me um, I feel b more like accomplished about completing the cottage knowing that it's built properly um, rather than like cutting corners because that, that just wouldn't sit right with me so that's how I've decided to do it. You're welcome to, uh, you know, disagree with me, just uh, respectfully so, I suppose. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you very much. Maybe hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time.